Acura, as with Cadillac, continues their participation in IMSA's top level of prototype racing in the new era of LMDH. They originally joined in 2018 during the DPI era with their ARX05 vehicle as the fifth generation of the ARX line of Le Mans prototypes. The ARX line began in the mid-2000s with the unsurprisingly named Honda Acura ARX01, which, in what may be a common theme at this point, struggled somewhat with reliability in its first season, 2007, despite being a strong contender in class on per lap pace. Greater success arrived in 2008, which in part spurred the development of the LMP1 ARX02 and ARX03. In many ways, competing in LMP1 in this era was a Sisyphean task, dominated by Audi and Peugeot's diesel spaceships, but the industrious chaps at Honda Performance Development plugged along and built a car that was sufficiently competitive to dominate the races in which Audi and Peugeot were not present, and still kept in the mix at races like Sebring and Petit Le Mans when confronted with their billion-dollar budget competitors. Anyway, bygone glory days being just that, Acura committed to the DPI category in 2018 to compete against Cadillac, Mazda, and Nissan, though by the end of the 2022 season they remained as Cadillac's sole competitor with their ARX05. This period saw significant successes, especially under the Penske team banner, with a win in 2018 at Mid-Ohio, a repeat win in 2019 at Mid-Ohio, along with wins at Belle Isle and Laguna Seca, as well as podiums at Daytona, Long Beach, Watkins Glen, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, and Petit Le Mans at Road Atlanta, leading to a 1-2 finish in the season championship. 2020 saw both cars off to a rocky start, as with the rest of the world, before the number 7 found its stride along with a string of four wins at Road America, Road Atlanta, Mid-Ohio, and Laguna Seca, broken only by a second-place finish during another race at Road Atlanta, and bringing Penske another season championship. 2021 saw Penske bow out of the IMSA championship, with the two ARX05 sold, one each to Wayne Taylor Racing and Meyershank Racing, who now run the new ARX06 LMDH vehicles. WTR scored second place in the championship in their first season with the car in 2021, and 2022 saw them repeat the achievement, with MSR earning first in 22, with a string of five second places in the midseason and outright wins bookending the season at 24 Hours of Daytona and Petit Le Mans. Such success, along with Penske's announced partnership with Porsche, left the Wayne Taylor and Meyer Shank team's obvious choices to move into the GTP era with Acura. An interesting side note, just before the race debut of the new ARX-06s at Daytona in the beginning of this year, the Wayne Taylor Racing ARX-05 showed up on a familiar trailer-centric auction site. And despite bids climbing in excess of $560,000, the reserve was not met. And while Honda Performance Development stated that they would try to reach a deal with the highest bidder, what happened remains a question of... <laughs> Perhaps the final results of that will be revealed in the entry lists of the various HSR events in the next couple of years. Currently, two of the ARX05's DPI rivals from Cadillac and Nissan have found their way into private hands and are showing up in historic competitions, including at the MIDI event running this weekend at Road Atlanta. The new ARX06 continues the design language and general aesthetics of its predecessor, with more aggressive visual aero treatments dominated by a sort of front mustache stretching over the toe box and onto the front quarters. Looks rather good in my opinion, especially in the blue and black of the Wayne Taylor racing team. This body is draped over an Orica chassis, who also manufacture the effectively ubiquitous Orica 07 LMP2 for both IMSA and World Endurance Championship. At this point, Ligier is the only approved LMDH chassis manufacturer not to have a vehicle in competition with one of the four brands, and their appearances in competition are currently limited to a smattering of LMP3 vehicles, although they are reported to be working with Lamborghini on their LMDH entry planned for 2024. The Acura is also the only LMDH to be using an engine that differs in capacity from a previous racing application of the same engine. Cadillac is using a Definitely not the same as the old DPI's 5.5 liter naturally aspirated V8. Porsche's power plant is carried over from the 918 road car and RS Spider LMP2, and BMW's is an enhanced version of a touring car engine from the mid-2010s. Acura has retained a twin-turbo V6 with dual overhead camshafts and four valves per cylinder, but capacity decreases to 2.4 liters from the DPI's 3.5. While Acura has been somewhat opaque on the exact power output of the new engine, company vice president Kelvin Fu reported that power had increased a bit over the outgoing DPI, which produced right around 600 horsepower. 
As with all of the LMDH vehicles, the remainder of this output differential, up to 670 horsepower, is closed by the spec Bosch Extract Williams hybrid drivetrain. Acura also took a different approach to their testing regimen, particularly compared with Porsche and Cadillac. Following the 24 hours of Daytona, it was revealed that the longest continuous run test for the Acuras up to that point was only a few hours, rather than the 24 plus hour tests undertaken by the other manufacturers. This was counterbalanced by the quantity of tests Acura undertook, with HPD president David Salters saying that the car had tens of thousands of miles in testing, just in shorter blocks than the others. This, however, seemed not to be an issue as the ARX did its first racing laps around Daytona, qualifying for the 24-hour race in first and third, split only by the number 7 Porsche 963, and finishing a comparatively drama-free race in first and second for the number 60 and number 10, respectively. Of course, it was later revealed, just days before the Sebring 12-hour race, that the race-winning team had manipulated its tire pressure data during the race itself, gleaning an unfair advantage to win. Fairness of the penalty assessed notwithstanding, point penalties for the drivers and team, a forfeit of the race prize money, and a $50,000 fine, as well as probation for Mike Shank and suspension of the race team engineer, all remain a matter of debate, but the qualifying pace, as well as the number 10 Wayne Taylor Racing's strong showing, clearly demonstrated the ARX 06's viability as a race car. Sebring was a more closely fought battle, although the number 60 car, perhaps in a show of contrition, contended itself with a fast showing and one free practice before qualifying in fifth overall, ahead of both BMWs and the aforementioned number 7 Porsche, while Ricky Taylor put the number 10 Acura in third position on the grid. Of course, as has been discussed ad nauseum both by myself and others at this point, the number 10 failed to finish the race, classified 10th, and the number 60 finished a number of laps down after a wheel parted company with the car under slightly two hours to go. An unfortunate set of endings, to be sure, although the Long Beach Grand Prix would bring further shenanigans and disappointment for both teams. A 1-2 qualifying blitz by the number 10 and number 60 ahead of Acura and BMW soured in less than a lap, with a touch between the number 60 and one of the BMW GTPs, sending the number 60 spinning almost in sympathy with the yellow, not gold as the commentary team seems obsessed with calling it, number 01 Cadillac as it massively misjudged its braking distances, locked up, nosed into the wall, and made a general fool of itself. The number 60 was largely undamaged and rejoined the race at the back of the GTP pack, but never truly found its way back to the front of the pack throughout the one hour, 40 minute long race, despite hopes for a safety car. The number 10, by contrast, had a blistering first stint by Philippe Albuquerque, let down slightly by a slower pit stop that dropped them from the lead of the race. But Ricky Taylor, taking advantage of the Porsche 963s being harder on their tires than the Acuras, led a rather epic comeback against the two leaders until, with around two minutes left in the race, he made a plunge down the inside of the lead and managed to absolutely stuff it into the barrier, resulting in a second consecutive DNF for the team, although at least this time no other cars were collected along the way. The next outing for the two Acuras will be at Laguna Seca in mid-May. Unlike their competitors, Acura has yet to announce or commit to plans for a WEC appearance or to offering customer cars. While, according to senior leadership at HPD, it may be in the future roadmap for the brand, the greater expense to build and run the cars over DPI, as well as the significant increase in supply chain complexity, is driving their short-term focus to working with their current partner teams in IMSA. Any intent of a Le Mans appearance also remains undiscussed, although it cannot be discounted for 2024 or beyond. And as for this video's call to action not containing the three sacred words of YouTube, three like, comment, subscribe. As layoffs, bank failures, interest rate increases, and general economic malaises continue to fill the news, why not take some time this weekend to think holistically about your finances and the old tenets of financial responsibility? Perhaps review your personal spending habits, update your budget to reflect new spending trends, or create one if you don't have one, and cancel any lingering subscriptions you no longer use or could do without. It's never too early or too late to start building up savings for a time when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. Someone may not always be there for you. Anyway, have a good evening, everyone.